What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at SteamOS 3, otherwise known as Steam Deck OS, running on the Ryzen 6800U powered GPD WinMax 2. So I've actually been messing around with SteamOS on the 6800U for a little while now, but power management has really been an issue with the laptop that I have with that Ryzen 7 6800U. But luckily, with the GPD WinMax 2, we have full BIOS control and we can set that TDP directly from there. And in turn, we can limit that CPU and GPU power. So with the laptop that I have, it maxes out at around 40 watts, no matter what I do with SteamOS. But with this here, I've got it set for 25 watts, which seems to be a really good sweet spot for this little chip here. And when it comes to Linux gaming on the 6800U, this thing is actually putting out some really great performance. So the operating system that I'm using here is known as Hollow ISO, but it's basically the same thing that's installed on the Steam Deck. It's based on SteamOS 3, and we've got all of the latest updates right now. And with the WinMax 2, I've got everything working, from the Wi-Fi, brightness control, speaker, built-in controls. The only thing that's not working in the operating system right now is power control, and like I mentioned, we can limit that from the BIOS, but I'm sure in the future we will get some sliders. There is a third-party plugin that you can install with Crankshaft here known as HandyPT, and I'm sure this will be fixed in the future so we can do full TDP control with this application. But right now from this application, we can actually turn off multi-threading and CPU boost. And in a lot of these games you're going to see running, I don't have any CPU boost going, which is definitely going to save us some power. Really, when it comes down to it, we need to get enough power to that GPU. And if you've been following the new RDNA 2 APUs, you know that the internal GPU here, which is known as the Radeon 680M, can actually pull quite a bit of wattage. So I'll give you a quick rundown on the basic specs here. For the APU, we've got that Ryzen 7 6800U. This is based on Zen 3 Plus. We've got 8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 2.7 GHz, and a boost up to 4.7. 16 GB of LPDDR5 RAM running at 6400 MHz. The new RDNA 2 based 680M iGPU at 2000 MHz. It's got a 67 watt hour battery and supports 100 watt PD quick charging and a beautiful 10.1 inch IPS display. Now if you're interested in learning more, I will leave a couple links in the description, but I want to jump right into some gaming here because the performance is really impressive. So first on the list, we've got Injustice 2. I'm at 1080p, high settings, running at a constant 60. And remember, I do have boost off for this. If you take a look at Mango HUD running over in the left-hand corner there, you won't see it go over 2.7 gigahertz. And even with this game, I could turn off multi-threading. We'll only have those eight cores running with no extra threads, and it'll still run just like it is right now at 1080p high. Moving over to Project Cars 2, 1080p with a high medium mix. Unfortunately, with this maxed out at high, I did get some really low dips, so I did have to turn a few of these settings down to medium, but we're getting amazing performance out of this. I got an average of 97 FPS, and you know, looking at the average right now with the mix that I got going on, you'd think all high settings would be good to go, locked at 60, but it just wasn't doing it, so I kind of need to go through and find out exactly what setting was causing those dips. Here's Cyberpunk 2077, and I was very impressed by how well this runs. I got the Steam Deck preset from the settings, 1280 by 800, but instead of using FSR performance, I'm set to quality just to get a little better picture out of it, and this thing manages an average of 71 FPS. Now if you play this, you know, on your main PC or your laptop, you know how hard it can be to run. So seeing it run over 60 on a handheld device is pretty awesome. Witcher 3, 1280 by 800 medium settings with no system-wide FSR on, and it does work with this unit here. You just need to bring up that Steam overlay or the Steam Deck overlay and turn it right on. But we didn't need it for this game, and we got an average of 81 FPS. Now this game on the Steam Deck also performs really well, and we're not getting much over that, at least with this one here.
Here's Elden Ring, and I've never really had great luck on APUs with this game. This seems to be running about as good as the Steam Deck. We do get, you know, a higher frame rate every once in a while, but this is one of those that you definitely kind of want to lock it down at 40 or 45. The 6800U does an amazing job with Doom Eternal. Here it is at 1280 by 800 medium settings, and we can get on up in the 80s. So this is one of those games that's going to be fully playable on this device. When it comes to God of War running on the 6800U, even in Windows at a much higher wattage, I'd say 45 watts, I still can't get it to run at a constant 60. Now we can get there, but we've got some dips under. Right now we're at 1280 by 800 FSR set to quality, and the frame rate is unlocked. I mean, it's definitely trying its hardest to hit that 60 mark, but I'd say the best way to play this is original settings, 1280 by 800 quality FSR locked at 45 FPS. It's just going to give you that really nice look. We're not at balanced with FSR or performance, so we've got a little higher resolution here, and it will stay at a constant 45 FPS. And it actually feels really good like this. Of course, it would be nice to play this at a locked 60, but unfortunately on these handhelds, we just can't do it right now. And the final one I wanted to take a look at was Spider-Man Remastered. I'm using the Steam Deck preset profile here. So we're at 1280 by 800. We've got a lot of these settings at medium. It's just whatever the Steam Deck runs at. Right now we're indoors and we're getting a really steady 60 FPS out of this. But, you know, if you've played this game, you know, going outside in the open world and doing some web swinging will dramatically lower that FPS. And out here, we need to go ahead and set it to 45 FPS. Or you could just run it at 45 like we did with God of War. And I know I'm going to have a couple people ask about desktop mode. It is working on the GPD Win Max 2. We can head right over here. And since we've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and everything working, we should be good to go. There's one little thing that isn't working with the trackpad, and that's kind of a double-click action. So trying to hold and drag a window just doesn't work out, but, you know, drivers definitely need to be updated. And this operating system wasn't specifically built for the Win Max 2 but we can go through and update Hollow ISO directly from the Update Center. So it's really only a matter of time before we get something specifically tailored for the WinMax 2. Now, uh, GPD has come out and said that Valve contacted them about optimizing SteamOS 3 for this device, and that would be absolutely amazing. But for now, we're actually seeing some really great performance. I personally can't wait till HandyPT is updated so we can adjust that TDP on the fly from within SteamOS 3. That would be awesome so I don't just have to set it right there in the BIOS. But performance is pretty good for a first look, and that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on the AMD version of the GPD WinMax 2, just let me know in the comments below. Like always, thanks for watching.